In section 8.1, we'll be focusing on ratio and proportion. After studying this section, you will be able to recognize and work with ratios, recognize and work with proportions, apply the product and ratio theorems, and calculate geometric means. I'm sure you've worked with ratio and proportions in your other math classes. However, today we are going to relate these ideas to geometry. Let's first start off by defining a ratio. A ratio is a quotient of two numbers, and it can be written in any of the following ways. You can write it as a fraction, 4 to 7. You can write it with a colon, 4 to 7. You can write the word 2 in between the two numbers, like this, 4 to 7. And last but not least, you can also use a division sign in between the two numbers. We don't use that way as often, but it is possible. The slope of a line is the ratio of the rise between any two points on a line to the run between any two points. So we've seen it there. Let's think of some other real-world examples of ratios. On a map, the scale gives the ratio of the map distance to the actual distance. So we've seen it there. And then also you can see it as a general comparison of two things. So for example, the ratio of boys to girls in a class or girls to boys in a class. Proportion directly relates to ratio in that a proportion is an equation stating two or more ratios equal. So for example, if I were to give you the ratio one-third, we know that one-third is equal to two sixths. So that's a proportion. Let's do another example. If I gave you 14 to 20, 14 to 20 is equal to 7 to 10. And finally, 3 fifths is equivalent to 12 twentieths. The means extremes ratio theorem is something that you want to make sure you know moving forward. You want to make sure that you recognize in a general proportion the first, second, third, and fourth terms, which are always in that order. The first and fourth terms are called the extremes. I always like to think of those as on the ends. And the second and third terms are called the means. I like to think of those in the middle. So let's look here at our proportion, and let's label our means and extremes. And then don't forget, we have our first, second, third and fourth terms, which can also sometimes be called first, second, third, and fourth proportionals. Now this proportion can also be written as a times d must equal b times c, which I'm sure you've seen in the past. You can cross multiply to solve. And the means extremes product is a fancy way of saying that. It states that in a proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. It's a fancy way of saying cross multiply. In example 1, let's solve for x using the means extremes product theorem. So if we cross multiply and multiply our means and set that equal to the product of our extremes, we're left with 87x is equal to 87, and we get that x has a value of 1. Now the geometric mean and the mean proportional mean the same thing, so you can use them interchangeably. And this is when the means of a proportion are equal. So for example, if I were to give you the proportion 1 third is equal to 3 ninths, notice that our means in the proportion are both 3. And if I were to give you a general one over here, our means are both x in that general proportion. So for example, if I wanted you to find the mean proportion between 6 and 18, well, we don't know what our means are, but we know that they're between 6 and 18, which are our extremes. So we can set it up like this. Then to solve for x, we can cross multiply or use the means extremes product theorem, which leaves us with x squared is equal to 108. In order to solve for x, we have to take the square root of both sides of the equation. But since we're not working with the length of segments or the measure of angles, we can list both the positive and negative values for our answers here. And when we get the square root of 108, we can simplify that radical to find that the largest perfect square you could divide 108 by is 36. So our final answer is positive or negative 6 radical 3. Also, keep in mind, you said find the geometric mean between the two numbers. That would mean the same thing, so just keep that in mind. For example, too, I tell you that 6 is the mean proportional, or 6 is the geometric mean between 12 and a number. So we can set it up like that and cross-multiply. The arithmetic mean is the average of two numbers. 
I always like to think A for arithmetic, A for average. So for example, if I asked you to find the arithmetic mean between the two numbers 10 and 14, we would simply add the two numbers together and divide by 2, since we have two numbers, which leaves us with 24 divided by 2, which is 12. We will pick back up with the second part of the notes and do the additional practice problems in just a moment.